In this lesson, we're going to have a new button whose function is to open a second activity. The second activity would display data gotten from a shared preference. Now, we're going to find the button using find view by ID. The ID of the button is move, as you can see. Then on the set on click listener, we create an intent to start the second activity. The second activity has just a text view. It displays second activity. In the second activity, we got the text view by using find view by ID. Then got a reference to shared preferences, a file called Lemobit app. We then get the value of the key Lemobit, whose default value is not active. We then set the text of the text view to the value. So this means initially the text view will display not active. So let's run this and see what happens. Once we click on move, we open the second activity which shows not active. Also, we can click display notification, but once we click it, nothing happens. Normally, your notification should respond to a tab. It could be to open an activity in your app or perform an operation in the background. For now, we are going to open an activity in the app when the notification is clicked. In order to do that, we first create an explicit intent stating the activity to be opened. In this case, that will be second activity. We use flags to define how activities are associated with task and how they behave in the back stack. We would add a flag to the pending intent, which is update current. We call set content intent and pass in the pending intent and also call set auto cancel. Let's change this object's name to notification intent. So let's run this and see what happens. When we click on show, we can close this application, click on the notification and you can see the second activity has been opened. Sometimes you don't want to open an activity but perform something in the background. You can do things such as start a broadcast receiver that performs a job in the background. So now we are going to have a broadcast receiver that accesses the shared preferences and then changes the value of the key Lemobit to active. This means that the second activity will display active. In the broadcast receiver, we call cancel on the notification manager so that the notification is cleared after it is clicked. The ID of the notification is going to be passed into the intent when the broadcast is being called. This would allow the notification manager to cancel the right notification using its ID. We create a new intent and specify the broadcast receiver class as the class to handle the action. We then add an extra which is the ID of the notification. 
This will be used by a broadcast receiver to cancel the notification. We then call add action instead on the notification builder. We pass in an icon, a title, which will be the title of the button and then pass in a pending intent. Now we can run this and see what happens. By call move, you will see not active. But let's call show to run the notification. I can come over here, click the button set active. Let's run the program again. I click on move and voila, we see active. So what happens is that the broadcast receiver received the signal, went to the shared preferences and then changed the value of the key lemo bit to active. Also, as a tip, before you run your application, make sure you register your broadcast receiver in your app manifest, just as you can see here. I just put the tag receiver and in the Android name, I specify the class, which is the broadcast receiver. You also have Android exported to be true. The source code for this app will be in the description below. In coming lessons, we will learn more about the power of notifications.